Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Country Bookshop Presents Pretty Perfect Kitty Corn. I am Angie. I'm the Children's Department Manager, and we're so excited to welcome Shannon and Lewin to uh, the Country Bookshop today. They were supposed to be here earlier, but we ended up in a snowstorm, and now we get to hang out together today. Um, we're also happy to welcome our partner organizations, Abrams Books, and the Country Bookshop. Uh, the Country Bookshop is in downtown Southern Pines. It's a 68 year old independent bookshop with books for kids and adults. We're open every day of the week and we love hosting author events like today's event. And we also love hosting in-shop book fairs for schools. If you'd like to purchase a copy of today's book and you didn't have a chance to get one before today, you can call the bookshop at 910-692-3211 or visit us online at www.thecountrybookshop.biz. Abrams Publishers publishes children's books and adult books, hardcover and paperback books for children of, children of all ages, as well as other resources, including um, supporting author events for the book, for events like today's event, Pretty Perfect Kitty Corn. We're also happy to work with the Southern Pines Rotary. The Southern Pines Rotary Club provided, worked with Authors in More Schools, which is a local children's literary nonprofit, and provided copies of Pretty Perfect Kitty Corn to every student in the first grade at Robbins Elementary. Yay! Thank you, Southern Pines Rotary. And for Montgomery County, uh, Beth Lancaster is a director of a literacy grant there. And she provided copies of Pretty Perfect Kitty Corn for every first grader, I think. Every, what Beth, what grade? Pre-K, kindergarten, and first grade at Mount Gilead Elementary. Yeah, so thank you for working with us also Montgomery County Schools. Um, our schools today, as we mentioned, are Robbins Elementary and Mount Gilead Elementary. Welcome everyone. We'll be taking questions throughout the day in the chat section of the screen. So if you're curious about anything, if you have questions no, that you'd love we'll to ask the authors, we'd love to have you post the questions in the chat. And if you're not on screen, if you would mute yourself, uh, we can hear our presenters, that would be great. We're so excited today to be able to have an author and an illustrator with us. Oh, no. of series including princess she said she said me trader today is lewin fam and she also helped out with the princess in black series so we are so excited to welcome both of you today thank you for being with us and i'll turn it over to you hi i think someone might still not be muted is everyone muted that sounds quiet. That sounds Shannon, quiet now. Yeah. You're not supposed to be muted, Shannon, so. <laughs> All right. Um, hi, everybody. I am Lewin Pham, and that's my other half, Shannon Hale. I don't know where you are in this fair, Shannon. Um, I am going to start sharing the screen. Can I start doing that? Should we pin ourselves here? Yeah, let's pin ourselves. Pin yourself. There I am. Okay, I'm pinned. Can you pin yourself? I did pin myself. Oh, okay. All right. I'm going to then. All right. Yay. Let's get started. You want to start? Yes. Let's do it. Woo. All right. Hang on. <laughs> there we are. Itty bitty kitty corn. Hooray. Oh, she's so cute, isn't she? She's so cute with her fluffy tail. Oh, win. I know. Look at that. Yeah, I don't know who are these cute little kids. They're so cute. Look at their little fat chubby. What happened to my cheeks, man? They just all got thin. <laughs> <laughs> that is little teeny me when I was in kindergarten. And yeah. that's little teeny win when she was in kindergarten or preschool. Yeah, but I mean, being as cute as we are, I think we could be cuter when. <gasps> Look at oh, that. Man. Why is everybody cuter with kitty ears and unicorn horns? Well, we saw you guys earlier. A few of you popped into the camera and you guys are all adorable with those horns. So, you know, everybody just wants to be a kitty unicorn. I'm telling you. Oh, Wynn and I have been friends for about 20 years. 
Sure. But we didn't work together. We, even though we both, I write books and she illustrates books. We didn't do any books together because I was writing novels like Princess Academy. Yeah, Shannon wrote these big, thick chapter books that like took no illustrations whatsoever. And I always wanted to illustrate some of her stories. And I was busy off doing uh, children's picture books. So you guys might know a lot of my picture books because I've done a ton of them. I've done 120 books. And Shannon, how many have you done? Uh, 40. 40, that's a lot of books that we've done. <laughs> <laughs> and half of them we've done together, believe it or not. I know. <laughs> I know. Finally, we got to start working together with the Princess in Black. Raise your hand if you know the Princess in Black books. Oh, please. Oh. I hope you guys are all raising your hands right now. <laughs> <laughs> we've done, we've, there's eight on this screen, but we've actually done nine books. The, the latest one is about a mermaid princess. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm doing number 10 and I'm painting it and I'm almost done. Yay! <laughs> but um, these are the best books to do because, wow, like it's a princess story. She's cute and she's pink and she drinks her tea and she tinkles in her little glass slippers. And then when her monster ring calls, she throws off her dress and underneath she is like this cool ninja princess that goes around fighting monsters and defending poor defenseless goats. And it's pretty awesome. So Thank you for these stories, Shannon, and, and your lovely husband, Dean. Yes, I write them with Dean, my husband. <laughs> <coughs> and there's another series of books that Wynn and I do together that are a little older, maybe you'll read in a few years. Mm. These are called, this is the Friends series. And if you can look at the covers of these books, mm. there is a redheaded girl in a green striped shirt on each one. Who do you think that might be? <gasps> You yeah. is it me? Oh, look how cute you look. <laughs> These books are true stories about me when I was growing up and when I had a lot of friendship troubles and I had a lot of worries. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would worry so much I would get stomach aches. If any of you guys, if you can think of an adult you love and trust who you can talk to when your worries are out of control, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you can think of someone you love and trust who you can talk to about your worries. Yay. And if that person is in the room with you or one of the people you can talk to is in the room with you, point to them now. I'm pointing to Wynn because I can always talk to her about my worries. I know. She's not in the room, but I'm assuming she's always in my head. So I, I can point <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Wayne right. and I like to think of ourselves as superheroes and my <laughs> superpowers writing. And my superpowers drawing. And together we put our heads together and we came up with what we thought was just the funniest, cutest, coolest idea ever. And it's this little girl. Look at her. She's so cute. It's kitty corn. Yay, itty bitty kitty corn. <laughs> And uh, even though we're supposed to be talking about a uh, pretty perfect kitty corn, we kind of want to keep that one a surprise. If you guys haven't read the book yet, maybe you guys can take a look and read it afterwards. Um, but we thought we would read to you Itty Bitty Kitty Corn, the first book right now, because the first book kind of leads into the second book. You want to yeah. do that? Are you guys Yay! excited? All right, let's do it. Let's read Itty Bitty Kitty Corn. Kitty thinks she might be a unicorn. A horn sits atop her fuzzy head, pointing up, up, up to the sky. She feels so perfectly unicorny. Look at me, says Kitty. You're not a unicorn, Pootie Pie, says Parakeet. You're curled up like a cat, Fluffy Fry, says Gecko. Kitty stands tall. She prances on her pod clawed unicorn hooves. She gallops on her incy wincy unicorn legs. Look at me, says Kitty. You're still not a unicorn, Fuzzy Heine, says Parakeet. You have a stubby tail, teeny tiny, says Gecko. Hmm. Kitty closes her eyes. She concentrates and... <laughs> Poof! Her tail puffs up fat. Look at me! Says Kitty. You're never gonna be a unicorn, funny foo. Says Parakeet. 
You meow in your sleep, Miffy Moo, says Gecko. Hmm. Nay, says Kitty. Nay, nay. She sticks her pink nose in their ears in case they didn't hear. Nay! You're a cat, says Parakeet. And that's that, says Gecko. Still, Kitty's unicorn heart beats harder. She lifts her front hoof and sweeps her magnificent tail. The sun is low, the shadows are long. At last, she looks exactly how she feels. Ah, look at me now, yells Kitty. Wow, says Parakeet, astonished. Ooh, says Gecko, impressed. Ooh. Finally, they see me, thinks Kitty. Can you guys see her shadow? Can you see what her shadow looks like? Does it look like a unicorn? It looks, it looks like, a, like unicorn. a unicorn. And she's sure that's how she looks. And surely, uni surely Gecko and Parakeet can see. But look where they're looking. Are they looking at her? They're looking somewhere else. Where are they looking? Where are they looking? Until clop, clop, clop. Gecko points with his fat tipped finger. Now that's a unicorn. The unicorn brandishes his horn. He sweeps his magnificent tail. He neighs a mighty neigh. <laughs> Suddenly, Kitty feels no bigger than a ball of lint. His name is Inky. Flop, flop. Look at Joe. Oh, someone's unmuted. Pardon me, says Unicorn. Yes? Squeaks, Kitty. I so admire your fuzzy ears and silver whiskers, says Unicorn. You do? Says Kitty. And I wondered. Unicorn looks right and then left. Did you know? What? says Kitty. Did you know? Says Unicorn, whispering now. What? What? Yells Kitty. Did you know? Says Unicorn. That I am a kitty corn? Kitty gasps. Her tiny tail twitches with joy. Yes, says Kitty. I see that now. You are a kitty corn. You are a fuzzy, furry, adorable kitty corn. Unicorn nods. I knew that another kitty corn like you would see. Yes, says Kitty. I see you. Kitty and Unicorn are both kitty corns. Kitty trots on her soft, teeny paws and Unicorn pads on his huge golden hooves. They both like to toss their manes and brandish their horns. They both like to scamper after bumblebees and stretch out in a patch of grass. And when the sun is low, their shadows merge till you can no longer tell one from the other. The Aww. end. Do you see the shape their shadows in now? Yeah, oh. my heart. Look at that. That was always our idea that we would end every book with the heart of some sort. Can you guys see? And so uh, the next book, there's a heart in there too. You're going to have to find out <laughs> where that heart is. That <laughs> so it's very um, silly. In fact, our next book, the book that we're out for, is called Pretty Perfect Kitty Corn. Shannon, you want to describe it a little bit? Sure. So Kitty and Unicorn, of course, are best friends now. They are best kitty corn friends. And Kitty is an artist, and she says, Unicorn, you look perfect. Hold still. I want to paint you. So Unicorn holds still so Kitty can paint his portrait. But he starts to worry, do I look right? Am I doing this right? Oh no, Kitty wants me to look perfect. And I'm not sure I look perfect. And he tries all different kinds of poses to try to figure out how to look perfect. And it's so stressful for him. <laughs> and then something very silly happens that we don't want to spoil for you. You can see when you read the book. 
Yeah, but at the heart of all of the stories, it's always between Kitty and Unicorn and what it means to be friends with each other. And sometimes it's hard to figure out how to be friends with someone when you're just having a friend for the first time in your life. And there's a, some like little rules you sort of have to go through. But at the heart, of it, it's always the same, isn't it? So long as you love that other person and you're kind with each other, you can always trust each other. There's nothing the other person can ever do to hurt you or harm you. And that's that's the thing about being perfect, you'll always be perfect in someone's eyes who loves you, no matter what you do, which is nice. Shannon. <laughs> oh, and now we're going to do something that's my favorite but far art. Well, it is drawing with win. Yay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to stop sharing here because it takes up the whole screen. All right. Are you guys all ready to draw? Do you guys have paper and pencil out? Because I am going to be giving you guys a drawing lesson. Or crayon or marker or whatever you have to draw with. Whatever you guys have out on your paper, on your on your um, your desk will work perfectly fine. In fact, I like to say whatever you can draw with, whatever you can get your hands on, you should do it. When I was a kid, I used to draw, don't tell anybody, I used to draw inside of um, books because I wanted to be an illustrator and I thought it'd be really cool if I had a book that I could draw inside. My parents didn't like that. I also drew inside telephone books and I drew on the back of my homework piece of paper that I didn't need anymore. And I drew on any sort of scrap paper I could find. I know, I'm gonna draw on a, on a receipt. Yeah, there you go, see? It's recycling paper, that's all you need. And whatever markers or pens or crayons or whatever it is you can find. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you guys today to draw kitty corn because kitty is so cute and she's a lot of fun to draw. And people look at her and they wonder how hard it is to draw. It's She's not very hard to draw. She's all fuzz, fuzz, fuzz. So we're gonna start, you can have this piece of paper here. We're gonna start with sort of a flat oval circle, okay? And this you might have to use this a darker marker. That pink is not showing up at all. Really? Oh, boobies. Okay, let's go. Let's try this one. With this. Is that working any better? Um, it is darker. Okay, hold on. Let's try this. And you're gonna draw a flat circle. Something like that. Can you draw something like that on your paper? It's a little bit like a squished egg. Yeah, there you go. Shannon's really good at this. Um, lady, you're gonna make it all fuzzy. So the, the uh, oval doesn't have to be perfect. And then once you've got your little flat circle, you are going to draw the eyes. The eyes are circles inside. So there's one on this side like this. And there's one on that side like that. Okay, two circles right in the middle like that. And then inside that circle, you're gonna draw another circle. If you've got a green marker, that's cool. But if you don't, you can do this in black. Another circle and another circle right inside. And you wanna make them right inside and colored in if you can like that so that you have something that looks like this there you go and to make this look like cat eyes you would make a little you see right here in the corner you're going to draw a little dot right here a little dot right there and then all the way on the other side a little dot right there and a little dot right there like that this is gonna turn it into cat's eyes. And then you'll make that line in between darker. So you'll go like this and darken up that line so it really looks like a cat's eyes. Like that. There's one eye and here's the other eye. Like that. You know, always notice how cats have those really beautiful creases in the corner of their eyes. That's what you're trying to draw right there. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Ha. Perfect is not uh -huh. a great thing. Uh -huh. There's no such thing as perfect. There's no such thing as perfect, except in someone's eyes who loves you. <laughs> <laughs> then it doesn't take much. All right. So has everyone got their cat's eyes all ready to go? Okay. Next, you are going to draw a little kitty nose so right between the eyes right between the eyes right underneath you're going to draw 
a round triangle upside down like that. So a little triangle, make it round if you can and make it upside down. And then right around, underneath that, you're gonna draw a Y or a W that connects right underneath the nose like that. So you'll have a W right underneath the nose. There you go, perfect. And then you're gonna to wanna to draw a little circle all the way around. And that's the muzzle of the little kitty's mouth. Little kitty's muzzle. So, so far we've got sort of the kitty's face, right? But now we need the kitty's, there it is. Now we need the kitty's ears. So right where the center of the eye is, if you were to draw a line almost straight up, that, a little dot right there, and the line from the middle of the eye straight up, a little line, right, a little dot right there. Those little dots are where you're gonna start to make your ears, and your ears are gonna be really fat like that, because kitty corn has really fat ears. And you'll do that on both sides, like that, and like that. I drew fat ears because kitties have really, really big ears if you ever look at them, they're super cute. And then inside the triangle, you're gonna draw another triangle. One, and then one more, smaller one, just for good measure, like that. In both ears, another triangle here, and a smaller triangle there. And you can color in that inside triangle if you want to, like that. Look, we got a little kitty face, look how cute. <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna to have to draw the horns. So the horn goes right on top and it's just a very tall, very thin triangle that goes right across the top, just like that. And to make it look just like our unicorn, you have to put the stripes of the unicorn horn going around. One, two, three, just like that. There you go. Oh, and Shannon always remembers the, the uh, whiskers and I always forget the whiskers. The kitty also needs little whiskers, doesn't it? So you can add a whisker one, two, three on one side and one, two, three on the other side. I think we have enough time. You wanna draw the whole body? Should we draw the whole body? You guys wanna do it? Okay, let's do it. All right, so back to your pink marker right underneath. So if you notice, kitty corn has a huge head and a tiny, teeny little body. And the body is shaped almost like a triangle. So right underneath, right underneath the nose, you're gonna draw sort of like a triangle that it's based on like that. And then at the end of those triangles, you're gonna draw big circles like this half circles actually, not all the way filled, like that. And then right in the center, you're gonna draw a line that goes right down. And at the end of it, you're gonna draw one circle on one side and one circle on the other side, like that. And then you're gonna finish off those little paws by putting lines to finish it off, like that. And then in between the paws, you're gonna draw the little toes of the kitty. And that's just two little lines, one, two, one, two. And on the back, see how the feet are kind of sitting up in the air? If you wanted to, you could put the pads of the kitty's feet on there. I don't know if I've done this one before, but you would draw three tiny little circles, one, two, three, and color them in. And then underneath, you can put a bigger circle like this. to get the pad of the foot. And you would do that same thing on the other, on the other foot. Ready? One, two, three circles. And then a little circle underneath. Like that. And then, yay! Oh, and look, Shannon's already got the tail in. You gotta make sure you get the little kitty tail right in the back. And if you're done with that, you can add fur everywhere. <laughs> make her as fuzzy as you want all the way around. That takes a little bit of time, but all the way around. And if you've got a crayon, you can color her in. And if you're feeling really, really, really industrious and wanting to make something even more out of all this, you know what you can do? You can take the drawing, you can cut it out 
and you can make a mask out of it. <laughs> if you feel like doing that too, if you've done it on paper. One of my favorite things about doing this with Wynn is that they don't all have to look like the way Wynn did it. The great thing about art is there's not just one right way to do it. There's no way to do it wrong. It's so great. It's called artist interpretation and it's mm -hmm. lovely. <laughs> However you did it is the right way. Congratulations. Oh, and we're going to see yes. some. Oh, oh my God. God. Yay. Oh, they're so good. I always love it because I think I draw Kitty great. And then I see your guys' drawings and then I realize, oh man, I could have done it so different. Look how cool it is. That's what I love about these drawings is you just realize how many different ways we can see the world. It's like, you know what it's like when you're drawing? It's like, we get to see inside of your brain, which not a lot of people can pull off very well. It's great to be able to see just inside someone's brain and see exactly how they see the world. And that's why everyone's kitty is just a little bit different. It's because it's exactly how you see the world. I love that. <laughs> Yay. Oh, hey. Do we have a way to do questions? Oh, here's some more kitties. Oh, good. Oh my goodness, someone looks like Yoda. It's so cute to look at the ears. <laughs> Oh, it's so okay. cute. So this is Angie. This Hi, Angie. Oh, there you go. Oh. Here's Angie. Oh, I love the Hi, attitude Angie. of yours. Yeah. I know. <laughs> um, I thought we would, we can have questions posted in the chat section. And I have a few from Robin's Elementary. They're joining us um, re recorded today. So I have some of those already to get started. Wow. And then Mount Gilead, if you have questions, you can just type them right there in the chat and I will post them to Lewin and Shannon. Yeah. But we'll start with some questions from Robbins. And the first question is, how did you train? This is for Lewin. How did you train to learn how to draw the pictures? You're so good at it. How did you, what did you do to start when you were younger? All right, guys, you guys want to hear my lesson on how to become artists? Yes. Well, there's no lesson on how to become an artist. We are technically all born artists. The minute you come out, the minute you like spit and slobber and put something all over the bed and you've like made a drawing out of your spit, you're an artist automatically. <laughs> so we are born artists. And as we grow up, we are told that we are not artists by people who can't see the world in a broad picture. And the truth is you stay an artist all the way until when you die. How do you get better at drawing, which is just a part of being an artist, is you literally do it every single day. You just take five, 10 minutes every single day. I'm not joking. I've been drawing since I was about three years old. I have this little bump on my finger to prove it. If you took an x-ray of my finger, my bone actually melded in to make space for a pencil or a drawing utensil in my finger. Um, I've been drawing every single day since I was three. There have been two days in my entire life I haven't drawn. It was, the first was when my son Leo was born. The second was when my son Adrian was born. That's it. And that's only because they wouldn't let me have paper and pencil in the hospital. Otherwise, I would be drawing them as they're coming out too. So, <laughs> so drawing every day is the biggest thing. But here's my secret tip so that you get better. So the first thing you have to remember is there is no such thing as a mistake in drawing. You can't draw a line wrong, okay? It's not like math. It's not like English. It's not like spelling. It's, your teacher can't go and make a red mark and say that you didn't draw that right. There is no such thing as a wrong line in art. So I know most of you guys don't believe me because a little when you get a little older, you think that doesn't look right or I didn't draw it right. And that's absolutely not true. I would like you guys just to prove that to stop drawing with a pencil and anything that it can erase and to draw only with markers or pens or crayons or something that you cannot erase. And the reason why is you can't get rid of it. Once the line is down, it stays down. And the more you draw, the more you realize, hey, this isn't really a mistake that I made. I can turn that into something else. This little line that I squiggled, not, not the way I really wanted it to, it can turn into something else. And you'll be surprised, I'm surprised always, how many times something that I thought 
wasn't looking right turns into something I never expected it to be. So drawing with a marker will really, really help. Your parents will hate hearing that. So sorry, teachers, that it's going to ruin your tables, but that is the best way to become better as an artist. So draw with a marker, draw with something you can't erase with. Never listen to people say that there's such thing as a mistake and do it every single day. If you yeah. do that, you don't have to go to art school. You will just get better because you do it all the time. That's my five minute lesson on how to do <laughs> <laughs> hey, this question is for Shannon. So Kitty Corn, did you have her in your mind first or did you have a story first? You know, what's funny is usually that kind of question is for the writer because usually the writer comes up with the idea first and then writes it and then the illustrator comes in. But the truth with this story is that Wynn and I came up with it together side by side. This was absolutely our joint creation from the very beginning. That's really unusual. It really, these books are two best friends making a story side by side to try to please each other. And just like Wynn was recommending a great way to become uh, an artist, I would say a great way to become a storyteller is do it with your friends sit down, make up something together. It doesn't have to be something you write down or something that you draw, though you could do that. It could just be something you act out. You guys already do that when you play pretend. Let's pretend we're mermaids. Let's pretend we're ninjas. You're making up stories right then with your friends. So you are storytellers. Yeah. And actually, Shannon and I, we keep saying that if we'd known each other when we were little, little, little kids like you guys, we would have made 3,000 books by now. So just think, you guys can make 3,000 books by the time you're our age if you get started right now and just buddy up with someone and start writing and drawing together and telling stories. Woohoo! Sorry. <laughs> um, so, okay. So now we have an idea. How long did it take you to make the book? It's hard to say because we would go back and forth. We like we live in different states. I'm in Utah and Wynn is in California. Mm -hmm. And we like to be together whenever we were working on it as much as possible. So we spent several months on it, but you know, taking breaks and, and doing it when we got back together again. We kind of made a deal. So we said we came up with the idea when we were in a coffee shop together. We were we were actually working on a tour. And we were sitting around and we came up with the idea together and we made the deal. We're not going to work on this story until we can actually be together. So from then on, it, it, we had to wait until I could fly out to visit Shannon or she could fly out to visit me. So because of that, it took a little longer than it probably should have. But the idea came fast, didn't it? It was like, yeah. you guys ever do that when you come up with an idea and it's like perfectly formed in your head. Every piece of it is right there. Some of the details are missing, but like the, the heart of this little kitty before she was ever a stuffed animal, like we knew exactly what she was going to look like inside our head and we knew exactly who she was. And that that's pretty cool. That's that's really fun when you make it with your friend and you realize, okay, we came up with this thing. It gets like a little brainchild. So in the same way that Shannon, um, you like we write the story together too. Shannon helps me with the drawings. She's always sitting there. The reason why Kitty is as fuzzy as she is because Shannon and Shannon just kept saying, fuzzier, fuzzier, make her head bigger, make her head so big she can't even stand with it. So every part of it was just me saying, okay, okay, let me do it, let me see, let me see. And we're just trying to make each other laugh and trying to make each other happy with the story. And that's how we end up with like, with this, with this little kitty that you see in front of you. Mount Gilead, do you have any questions? If you do, you can type them right there in the chat. I do have one more question from Robbins Elementary. They want to know, what is Kitty Corn's favorite food? Ooh, good one. <laughs> in the third book, we have them eating cupcakes. Mm -hmm. Cupcakes just... with little like candies on them to make them look like unicorns. <laughs> so there's I would say cupcakes book. are probably unicorn's favorite food. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say for Kitty, gosh, um, yeah, unicorn that we know likes cupcakes and chocolate and uh, noodles with butter. Yes. Um, and for Kitty, I would say she's a big fruit fan. You think so? I, I think she could sit down with a spoon and half a watermelon and eat the whole thing. <laughs> you know what? Can we think about that one? Because that one, maybe we'll yeah. answer that in a future book. Maybe they'll okay. have a little a picnic. We look forward to finding out. Ooh, I s'mores. Know. Oh, s'mores. Oh, that would be. She's got to be a s'more fan if I ever saw one. Oh, 
Totally. She's got to take one thing and combine it with another because that's like the essence of who she is. S'mores mm-hmm. might be a good one. I, I mm-hmm. kind of wish, but even though I have to admit, I don't really like s'mores that much. Oh, I love s'mores. Oh, roasted marshmallows with the crunchy gram and the melty chocolate. It's like sandwich. It like too sticky or sweet i can't see anyone raising their hand but i'm gonna assume most of you guys are raising your hand i don't know s'mores i never asked for s'more for more s'mores wait that's what s'mores means doesn't it can i have some more <gasps> wow <laughs> revelation i just learned that oh my goodness oh uh, we got a question of how did we meet we uh were we were both just working in the book business and we knew someone in common it was a long time ago like i guess it was 18 years ago it was a long time ago. It was, it was when your oldest son was born. So yeah. and he's 18. So there you go. 18 years. That's a long time. Oh, how this do- question has, how do you keep a good friend? What a great question. I've never asked us that before. That's good. That is a good question. I would say when I was little, one of the best ways to keep a good friend is give and take. Like, if I was always wanting everything to be my way and only play games my way, it's hard to keep a good friend that way. And it's also doesn't feel good to have a friend who always wants everything their way and you never get heard. So yeah. I would say you guys get to take turns being who decides what game we're gonna play and what, how we're gonna do it this time. Someone that can kind of go back and forth to listen to your ideas and to give their own ideas. That's a great way to keep a friend. <laughs> and as I get older, I think just, it's kind of just the same thing, but but more complicated where, I'm looking out for my friend and checking with my friend and being there for my friend when she needs me. And she's also there for me when I need her and we have fun together. That's the, that's the important part. That to me is the biggest one is that we can laugh that you can laugh with your friend. Laughing is a big deal because I think if laughing is done the wrong way, you feel hurt. You feel like, Oh, someone's laughing at me and you feel bad about it. And it's only when the two people are laughing together that you realize no one's laughing at anyone else. You're laughing together. And that makes a big difference. So for me, it was always being able to hang out, with, hang out with someone who I didn't have any problems laughing with. I could laugh at things together with them because it just meant nothing was, was too serious and everything was, 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 I don't know, it's just a little easier when you laugh at people. But I think also you have to not be afraid to be who you are. I know that doesn't mean a whole lot, (laughs) but I remember as a kid, I was always very nervous that I wasn't interesting enough or that I wasn't funny enough. I I had to pretend to like what other people liked so they would like me. Yeah. And it turns out if you just let people know who you really are, then you'll find the friend, the people who really, really like you too. And the the friends that, you know, stick around, they're just, they know you for who you are. and, And it doesn't matter that you do silly, goofy things. In fact, I got to say, I like Shannon all the more because she's really, really goofy. And if she wasn't so goofy, I think I'd be nervous being so serious around her all the time. And she's not a serious person. <laughs> she's just like, oh, she I does. don't know who's goofy or you or me, because you're pretty goofy. I'm ridiculous. That's what I am. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fun too. That's a good question though. That should be like yeah. one of our, our books. Like what makes a good friend and Unicorn and Kitty have to come up with answers for it. If you guys have any ideas for future books, cause we're still writing them, you know, like, please let us know. We'd be happy to put them in there. Mostly about how to keep friends. So this one says, how long did it take to draw the pictures when? When is really fast. I'm pretty fast. I'm fast, but this one um, with Kitty Corn, she's, I don't know how many of you guys ever draw pictures of your people's faces, but I have this big mirror in front of my drawing table. And when I'm stumped for a face, I'll look in the mirror and I'll make the face. So I'll, you know, and and once a teacher told me that I should be an actor because my face could change all these different things, but I use it all for my illustrations for my drawings. (laughs) That's where I go through. I make sure that each of the faces look just right. How long does it take though? I don't know. Sometimes it can be super fast and sometimes it takes a long time to get a drawing just right. Um, But these books, I don't know, they take us about what, six months to write and maybe a couple months to illustrate. So it takes some time. It takes some time. It takes about a couple of days or so on a painting. So don't worry if you're slow. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, some artists are different, right? One artist might have taken a year to to make this book and some artists might have taken a few months and some might have taken a few weeks. Everybody's different. 
I wish I could see your guys' faces because then I could ask, how long does it take you guys to do a drawing or a painting? Or, you know, sometimes you sit, if you can finish a drawing in the middle of the classroom, wow, that's pretty cool. That's like an hour to do a drawing. That, that's, that's drawing really, really fast. Some people will take two or three days to do the same thing. I think the longest I've ever spent on a painting was two weeks, two weeks on one painting. That's a long time. <laughs> All right, how did you become such a good artist? We talked about that. She, she draws every single day. <gasps> Shannon, how did you become such a good writer? I write all the time. And when I'm not writing, I'm daydreaming. Daydreaming is a really important part of being a writer. When I was a kid, sometimes adults would tell me, stop daydreaming. Boy, were they wrong. <laughs> now I make a career out of daydreaming. You know what happens when I'm hanging out with Shannon is I'll say something like green elephant. And then all of a sudden she'll be, <gasps> And then ding, 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 and she'll start to scribble something down. And I know that it's like another idea. She has- Now that I'm older, I have to write it down or I forget. <laughs> but she has 3 million ideas and 3 million stories that she hasn't yet written, so. Ideas are never a problem. Yeah. Um, but here's an idea for a future book from somebody, how to keep safe. Oh, I've been wanting to do a book about that. I think that's a really, really good idea. I'm right? interested how Unicorn and Kitty would would deal with that topic because I feel like unicorn would be a little more scared than kitty. Kitty's Why? more adventurous. And and unicorn's taller and bolder and bigger. And unicorn. Oh, isn't that funny? You, we would think that unicorn would be more confident, but unicorn I think is pretty anxious and worried. So, like for example, unicorn is not a strong swimmer, and kitty is. That's true. That's true. Why are cats better swimmers? That doesn't make any sense. And then also, I think unicorn would be shy of strangers because they're, you know, they're mythical creatures. They're in the forest all the time. They're always running away. People are always trying to steal their horns. Whereas kitty just goes right up to people and starts purring and making friends and has no Cats problems. are so confident. They're not worried what anybody thinks about them. <laughs> <laughs> but there would have to be a lesson on horns like to keep their horns from hurting other people. So that's a safety lesson. They if they put a little something like a yeah. cotton ball yeah. on the tip of yeah. their <laughs> These are good ideas. I wonder if we have time to do like one more drawing while we're answering questions. I think that's a great idea. Let's go ahead and maybe have one more quick drawing um, while we get ready to wrap this all up. I wanted to thank Shannon and Lewin for being with us. So thank you Robbins Elementary and Mount Gilead Elementary. And thank you Montgomery County and the Rotary Club of Southern Ponds for sponsoring our books for today. So Lewin, do one more drawing for us and then we'll have to say goodbye. We are gonna do one more drawing. I think I'm gonna teach you guys how to draw a unicorn because we've learned how to draw a kitty but we have not learned how to draw a unicorn yet. So unicorn is a bunch of different shapes all mixed together to make a unicorn. So the head of unicorn is sort of like a peanut shape. You guys know what a peanut looks like? Like that. So you're gonna draw a peanut shape like that. And then the body of the unicorn is also sort of a peanut shape, but a really fat peanut like this. Like that. So think of it sort of like a bean, like a kidney bean. So one big body and one tiny little peanut head. And then you're gonna connect the peanut head to the kidney body. You're gonna draw a line down and a line down. So the first line is gonna go almost to the center of the kidney bean. The second line is gonna go right to the front of the kidney bean. You guys got that? Okay. And then we're going to add the legs to the unicorn. So the legs can be really simple straight lines if you want, but if you're feeling a little adventurous, you can sort of make a little bow in the middle like that and like that. And that little bow in the middle is where the bone, the knee of the horse would go, of the unicorn would go. And when you get to the bottom, you flare the lines back out to make the hooves. That's one leg and you can add the little hoof that way. Very nice. Wow, look at Shannon. Shannon Shannon is the writer, but I swear at some point we are gonna switch positions because it turns out she is a really good artist that just never was realized and you- I love to do it, but I don't, I don't have the practice you do, not at all. If we had been friends as kids, I would have forced you to draw and you would have forced me to write. 
Wait, but then we wouldn't really be doing books together as much. Okay, never mind. That's good. It all turned out the way it's supposed to. All right, and then the back leg. The back leg is not two, uh, two straight lines. It starts with sort of right in the center of the kidney bean. You're going to draw the beginning of a circle, a half circle, and then you'll stop. And right to where this knee is, you'll draw a line there. And then sort of at a diagonal down, okay? That's the front, that's the front part of the, 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 the unicorn's legs. The back is going to be all the way here in swoop, like that. And then you'll connect it to the bottom. And right when you get to the bottom, you flash out again to make a hoof like that. So it's a half circle and then diagonal down and then a half circle the other way and then a diagonal down and a flash out at the bottom for the heel, for the hoof, and then another line for the hoof. So there's the back leg. And then you could make a shadow of the back leg because horses usually just kind of stay still like that. And you can darken that back leg if you want. Like that. And then the front leg, you can do the same thing. Or again, if you're feeling adventurous, you can draw a line out and then sort of a, an L shape down like that. Same thing on the underside, a line up. It's actually like a backward seven like that. And then again, make a hoof at the bottom. That. Okay, so now we've got the body of the horse, but we've got to make it look like a unicorn and we have to put the tail in. So let's go over to back to the face. And on the very top, you're gonna to make a little triangle for the ears. And you can put either a line down the center like that to show where the front of the ears go, just like that. And then right in the center of the peanut, a little bit higher than the center of the peanut, you're gonna make a circle like that. And then around that circle, you're gonna draw the rest of the eye, which is just a bigger circle like that. And if you want, you can make your unicorn smile like that. And then for the nose, just a little circle for the nostril. That's all you need. Okay, and we got to turn this into a unicorn. So we got to put a horn on top. You can make your horn as long or as short as you want. Our unicorn horn is pretty, sh is pretty short, but I've seen some unicorns with really long horns. And then we have to make it a glorious looking unicorn. So we got to add the purple or the mane if you want to put it on. And the mane is just super long hair that can go as wavy as you want in any direction you want and don't forget a little bit in the front too a little wavy in the front like that and the tail is the same thing in fact my tail is so big it's probably going to go right off the edge of the paper like that and wavy all the way down. And unicorns have really long tail made, so make sure it goes all the way to the ground. Like that. And there you go. You can see a little unicorn. <gasps> Look how beautiful that is. That's really nice, Shannon. I'm telling you. I haven't seen you draw a unicorn as much. No, oh, can we see any from the kids at all? Can any of the kids? <gasps> Look at that one. Oh, so majestic. That's awesome. I'm going to keep this up in case you haven't finished drawing. Oh my gosh, you guys are better at the unicorn than you are at the kitty. Look at that. Oh, those are great. We need to frame all these. Oh, wait, a little higher. Oh, look at that. Oh, look, that one's got something in the sky. Oh, and kitty's on the other side. Oh, it's a <laughs> You guys are so good. See, see, we basically, Shannon and I, have taught you guys how to draw a kitty, how to draw a unicorn, how to write, and how to draw. How to we can retire now. You've got it. I know. You guys just need to send us like your own stories and your own illustrations, and maybe one of them will be so good, we'll just steal it and turn it into a book. And not <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure to put your name on it. <laughs> <coughs>
Well, thank you so much for being with us today. What fun that was. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you and guys for your having spaces. us. We hope to see you again very soon. Thank you, Robbins. Thank you, Montgomery County. Thank you, Mount Gilead. Thank you, and thank you, Shannon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, thank you, Bye. Country Bookshop. You're the best. We love you. Thank you.